the eventual goal is to get to the point where we can inject particles into a healthy person to be able to detect and also image cancer. While I was at Los Alamos, I was doing brain research, magnetoencephalography. And then uh, Senator Domenici had asked me to start a, a brain foundation down here using that same technology. And about that same time, uh, my wife had breast cancer. And so I started looking into how can I use the technology that I'd use to measure magnetic fields from the brain for looking for cancer. The technology uh, from the sensor side, I understood very well and I had developed sensors and patented sensors for the brain using these uh, very sensitive squid sensors, superconducting quantum interference device. And I realized that you know, I could try to sense very small amounts of magnetic materials in the body if I could attach them to cancer cells. And so that I started looking more and more reading the literature and, and I realized that there was a way you could link the mag small magnetic nanoparticles to antibodies that would target certain kinds of cancer. And then there's a special kind of magnetic nanoparticle so I'm getting into nanotechnology called superparamagnetic particles that have a special property that they don't look magnetic unless you give them a little magnetic field and then they look magnetic and you get a big field from them. Well, that's something we could really use if we get in. So I, 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 then the problem was finding these particles. When I started buying magnetic nanoparticles from every company on, the, on Earth and some would work, and, but I knew they were never really good enough. And that's when I got con found out about SINT and, and Dale Huber here, and uh, we started looking at better nanoparticles. When, when Ed first talked to us about, about controlling size, he said he needed about 25 nanometer particles, and I said, well, I can make about 25 nanometer particles. I didn't appreciate at the time how stringent the size control was going to be, and I have to say, had I known at the time, I might have walked away, um, because it was, it was years of hard work getting the level of control that we need almost at the atomic level, control of the size of these particles. The problem with nanoparticles is that we've got to stop them from growing too large. And doing that consistently and reproducibly is a really interesting challenge, uh, and it's a big challenge. And that's sort of what sort of captured our interest and kept us working on this uh, for such a long time. On top of that, the application couldn't be more important. Um, I think this has a, a really fantastic approach to detecting cancer, and this is something that's going to have a dramatic impact uh, clinically. Every kind of cancer has a certain kind of biomarker. And uh, so in breast cancer, a lot of us HER2 positive, ovarian cancer at CA125. Together with the University of New Mexico, I was able to combine our particles with those uh, antibodies, and we saw that they attached to the cancer cells. We measured how many could attach to a cancer cell. We briefly magnetize them, and then we watch the magnetic field decay. We can locate where it is to, to less than a millimeter, and we can locate things uh, 100,000 times more sensitive than a mammogram for breast cancer. And moreover, we can now expand this technology to ovarian cancer, leukemia, prostate cancer, uh, because of these, this kind of a breakthrough. We've gotten to the point now where we're making our own hardware, making our own software, to do this in a really well-controlled computerized system. Um, there's still a lot of work. Um, there's a lot of synthetic skill that's required to make these particles. Um, but we've gotten it to the point where it's reproducible. We can make them repeatedly, and we can train people to make them repeatedly. This technology has now reached complete uh, fruition, and we can now make the best nanoparticles on, on Earth uh, for this kind of technology, these super paramagnetic particles, as they're called. The next big step for us is to make it easier for the operator, uh, and that's where we start to think about things like a, a microfluidic synthesis system, where we could actually have the entire process under computer control. So moving forward, even though we've got a system that works now quite well, um, we'd like to make it easier, uh, and we'd like to make, uh, make it easier to scale up to the kinds of commercial quantities that we'll need for eventual applications. To find the place like Scent just changed everything. As a user, it made an enormous difference to have a facility like this available, to be able to work with people here and develop all of this new kind of technology with these particles. That just made all the difference in the world. I would not have been able to succeed the way I have been able to succeed without the set resources.